Have you discovered that sometimes life just does not go as planned? Like today, when we hit a few technical bumps getting started. But it isn't life just like that. It's in these moments of frustration and things not going well that we can easily lose sight of God's faithfulness. In this episode, we're continuing our conversation from the first episode where we began unpacking some important truths about hope from Lamentations 3. Even when life gets chaotic, God's mercies truly are new every morning and His faithfulness never fails. If you joined us last time, get ready for more practical wisdom on how to apply these truths to your everyday life. If you missed our first episode, be sure to circle back and give it a listen. Are you ready to dig into God's compassion and faithfulness and how they meet us daily, no matter what life circumstances? Let's get to it because a deeper life starts now. Oh my goodness, this is why we need the habit of looking for God's faithfulness because Amen, sister. the moment in our situation, it doesn't seem like God's faithful, mm. right? It doesn't seem yeah. like God's showing up, that God is in the craziness or the stress or the problem with us. Oftentimes we're depending on our emotions to, to sense God's presence. Anyway, we're just gonna say welcome again Take a deep breath. It's all good because God's working in the midst of all of it. Yes. So friends, I've been studying all the tech pieces of this, but getting it into play is uh, another part of the puzzle. This is going to relate to something else we're going to talk, another concept that has to do with recognizing and looking for God's faithfulness, and that is marrying up our knowledge of God, what we know about God from scripture and yes. knowing it through experience. And there's a biblical word for that called gnosko. Wow. That's one of my favorite big biblical words. And it, it really is. It's that knowing intimately through experience, not just your head, but your heart and your life. So know it with your life. Ooh, yes. I like that. It's good. I know like it that a lot. with your life. That is good. So, Larissa, would you share with us the scripture that we are going to dig in today? So, Lamentations 3, 23 and 24 tells us the Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is one of those Bible verses that we see on posters. We see it on t-shirts. We see it yes. on pictures. Yeah. You know, we get like too comfortable, too casual about some of these truths. You know, a, an important part of, of maintaining your hope in God and growing in your hope in God is really coming to the scripture with fresh eyes every day. You know, this says that the Lord's mercies and his loving kindness is new every morning. But you yeah. know what? Our attitude, our watchfulness, our intentionality can be new and should be new every morning. Amen. <laughs> you know, one of the other translations that I've studied in the past, and I can't think of which one it is now. It might be New Living, not sure, but it says fresh every morning. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Good, yeah, right? fresh every morning is good. Um, let's unpack this. Let's start with the Lord's loving kindness. What What does it mean when we talk about the Lord's loving kindness? See, we all know what it's like to receive kindness. Somebody doing a kind thing for us or saying a kind word and how that makes us mm -hmm. feel. So just imagine what it truly means, the Lord's loving kindness. Not only will it never fail, but what does that mean for our lives in the practical sense? And that's that, you know, his loving kindness is is towards us and it makes an impact on us. It's it's just amazing to think about that. And one of those things where if we don't take this scripture for granted, it's you'd be I'm in awe, you know, as just thinking about that the Lord is kind to me. Um is amazing. Right. You know, and another aspect of this, this means that the Lord is for us. Mm -hmm. And on my hard days, on the days where I failed or felt unaccepted or rejected or feel like, oh, I just can't do whatever the doing thing is, yeah. sometimes it's easy to forget that God's for me. 
Amen. Um, and his Amen. loving kindness is for me. Yes. I don't know, those of you who are listening, do you ever have a sense that, well, that might be, I feel like that's true for other people. I see God do that for other people, but I don't feel like it's true for me. I must not be spiritual enough. I must not have prayed the right prayer or got too much sin in my life. I don't really think it's true for me. That's a natural default from our soul. We tend to be suspicious of God yes. sometimes, you know, and that started way, way back in the Garden of Eden uh, when the enemy said to Adam and Eve, hmm, did God really say that? Yeah. yeah. Fasting suspicion on the faithfulness and the character of God. If you get nothing else today, remember that God's loving kindness is for you. And it's for me. And sometimes I need to just tell myself that. Sometimes I just need to tell myself the truth. Hey, God is for me. His loving kindness is not going to stop. No matter what happens today, it's going to be there. Yes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's a my good word. truth to cling to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And it says that his compassions never fail. The compassions of the Lord are like those uh, I think one of the translations is like bowels of mercy. And, you know, we don't really talk like this. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not sure we're, you know, on spiritual truth podcasts, we're talking about bowels a whole lot. But the but, but what that means is from the deepest part, the gut, the most functional, sustaining part of us has to do with our bowels. And God is full of mercy. It's, it's so intrinsic to yeah. who he is and compassionate. When we're experiencing tough times, stress, or just the busy craziness of life, we need to remember that God's compassionate. Yes. Definite. And it never fails. It's one of those promises that he's loving, kind, and he's compassionate, and it'll never fail no matter what. So that's the sweet reminder. You know, you've taught me that a lot about, you know, in this scripture, is this a, you know, practically speaking, is this a promise? And mm -hmm. it is. It's a promise that his compassion will never fail. No matter what we do, what we say, or what's going on around us. So it's very such a sweet promise. Yeah, it is. Our plans fail. Our good intentions fail. Our ability, strength, and energy has limits. God's does not. Amen. Yeah. Um, he has no limits. And I think one other thing that comes to mind when we're talking about the compassion of God, I think sometimes if we've had strict parents, Mm. Um, or really authoritative teachers at some point in the past or uh, been brought up in a very legalistic religious environment, we can have this uh, view of God as the uh, judge, the, the mighty judge, the strict teacher, the unpleasable parent. This section of verses is so counter to that. Yes. What, what are God's main attributes brought out here? His loving kindness, his compassion, it never fails. It's not based on us. It's not based on what we've done or didn't do. It's based on the character of God. And that's why we can have hope in God's faithfulness is because it's based on him and not us. Yes. So we need to remember that God is for us and he's not uh, waiting for us to mess up one more time and slam down the hammer. God is not man. Right. I, I had to learn to overcome that because I had those types of parents. God, like you said, is for me and is kind and is not coming at me with a pointed finger and pointing out everything I've done wrong. Now he does, you know, Holy Spirit convicts us, of course, um, there's consequences to our behavior, mm -hmm. but it's not that every day, oh, she she messed up or, or whatever. Um, and so I had to overcome that. It took me a very, very long time to not compare my earthly father with my heavenly father. And that made such a difference it does. in my life when I remembered that no matter how much I mess up, you know, correction is actually a form of love when done well, right? When right. Done properly. And so the Lord will correct us, but he does it in a loving way. So many examples in the Bible, right? Of where the Lord still loved Peter, no matter, you know, not to pick on Peter, but he's, a, I'm reading the gospels right now. Peter chops off the ear um, in the in the garden, Christ puts it back on, and he's not going around pointing fingers. So yeah, that compassion um, is so so sweet, and not comparing. 
our heavenly father with our earthly father, even if your earthly father is amazing, because some right. people have amazing earthly fathers and, and there's no comparison still, but I'm glad some people do. So I, I was going to ask you to relate to that and share from your experience. So I love the synergy that you were already there <laughs> and I didn't even have to ask that question. Now, because God's word tells us that he is faithful, we can look for his faithfulness with active faith, mm. expectation, hope, and waiting on God's faithfulness. We might not see it in the moment, but when we hang on to the belief in what God says and that his word is true, then we can expect, not entitlement, but expect God to be faithful because he said he is. That is something that is so important because it's hard to wait for God's faithfulness. It's yes. hard to hope when you're experiencing hard things or maybe sometimes even just something that you've prayed for for years, mm. a super long time, and it just doesn't seem like anything is happening. Waiting with expectation is part of hope. And this concept of looking for God's faithfulness, believing he's faithful, and then looking for it because he said it's new every day, which means Amen. we can see it every day. But here's the thing. How often am I looking for it? Yeah. Oh, man. How often do I have a mindset, a orientation, uh, awareness, a watchfulness, a habit of looking for God's faithfulness. This is a habit of hope. This is a practice that we can apply every single day or every single day that the Lord brings it to mind. A super simple practice that we can do to to cultivate this habit of looking for God's faithfulness, of watching for it, is simply to start the day in prayer, mm. asking God to help us to notice his faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yes. Yeah. We can say, Lord, make me aware of your faithfulness today. Show me what you're doing around me today. Remind me of your faithfulness. Yeah. We can also, in that prayer, affirm this truth. Lord, your word says that you are faithful and that your compassion is new every day. Would you show me? Would you help me to recognize it during this day today? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, that's just a daily practice that can really change how we engage with God. It can help us grow in faith. It can give us hope even in difficult situations because it's not a question of if God will be faithful today. Right. It's what's it going to look like? Am I going to notice his compassion? I think that's really something that opens up a sense of adventure and a, a sense of discovery with God. That's so, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, like, is there a certain prayer that you pray sometimes in the morning that it's kind of like this that kind of sets your mind to be connected with God during the day or to be aware of God during the day. One of the things that I have been saying for a really long time, and I say this on my broadcast, is be the noticer of the good, right? And then also be the noticer of God. Like, where is it. God? I know, isn't that fun? So where is God? So I, that's a lot of times what I'll pray first thing in the morning. First thing, of course, you know, as grateful chick, I always just say, Lord, thank you for getting me up. Um, thank you for this day, right? This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be mm -hmm. glad in it. But I ask him to help me because I tend to have that personality where I, I have my tasks, I have my to-do list, and I just want to jump in. And so um, I pray that I would be the noticer. You know, Lord, show me where you are at and um, help me to then follow you. We're not called to ask him, hey, this is what I have today. Will you be in all of it? And not that we can't ask that because he wants us to come to him, you know, as you're saying, mm -hmm. and ask him and 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 have him take part in what we're doing. But it's really more about what is he doing and we get to be a part of that. And I've worked really hard at noticing where he is at. I also love then what you say about um, 
active faith. And I think that would be a great addition to my prayer in the morning. Lord, give me that active faith. Right. What does that look like today? Help me be more actively looking at your faithfulness in my life. Mm -hmm. I think something that's super important to remember that when we set, when we have a desire to have that intentionality to cultivate a habit of hope, a habit of faith that's going to help us stay connected to God and grow in faith no matter what's happening around us. Who put that desire in our heart? Mm -hmm. Holy Him. Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Before it was on our radar, before you thought about this today, friends, Holy Spirit was already working to enable you to hear what we're talking about today. Yes. He's working to give you a desire to want that in your life so we could trust him to help us in the process. It's not all on us to build this perfect habit. It's right. not a pass-fail type of thing. It is a trusting type of thing. We can trust the Holy Spirit to help us. I love that we have a with God life. Yes. Amen. That's the whole reason Jesus came. That's the whole reason why he sent the Holy Spirit, so that we are living an abiding life a with God life. Christ is in us. We're in Christ kind of as a brain bender, but we just, you know, it is an organic union. Uh, we can trust the Holy Spirit to be in the process with us. So we can start our day with faith. A couple of other things. So we talked about asking God yes. to help us notice his faithfulness. We talked about affirming the truth of what he says, declaring the truth. You talked about being grateful for God's faithfulness. Sometimes we're grateful after the fact, yes. but we can be grateful before we've seen it because that's how faith works. Yeah, if I believe so good. his faithfulness is going to be new today, that there's going to be some manifestation of his loving kindness, his compassion, his faithfulness in my life today. I can, at the beginning of the day, I can say, Lord, thank you for how you're going to be faithful in my life today. Would you help me notice it? <laughs> well, and that's what's so great about faithfulness and gratitude is that the Lord has been faithful to all of us already. So we can remember, and this is what gratitude does in writing things down and journaling, mm -hmm. and you and I both journal in different ways, um, but it reminds us of God's faithfulness. So if you're praying for, you know, healing, let's say for, for someone, we all have stories of God's faithfulness before. And, and you know, I've shared this as a, as a military spouse. I, I would always remember how God put a roof over our head. I never had to worry. I didn't know what it was going to look like, <laughs> but I've always had a roof over my head. And so God has been faithful. And that's just like one small example, but that's a great thing too, is we can remind ourselves every morning in this newness, you were saying coming with like a new attitude is, Lord, you have been faithful on every broadcast before this. I can trust you to be faithful in this broadcast, despite, you know, the, the chaos or whatever. Yeah. And so I love that. It's such a, a great reminder. I want to go back just a second to something I said at the beginning of our broadcast when we were having technical difficulties and I had was sharing that this is just one of those days that didn't start well behind the power curve, all kinds of crazy things happening. Not bad things, but just things that got in the way of my agenda. That prayer of trusting and putting our hope in God's faithfulness and asking God to show us his faithfulness and then just reminding ourselves that God is faithful. I used that when I was praying in the midst of, oh, am I going to be ready on time? Am I going to, is the tech going to work? Is the da, 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 da. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. You are going to provide everything that I need today. You're going to provide the time that I need today. You're going to provide the words that I need today. You're going to provide the settled presence that I need today, you're going to provide. Um, thank you now for your faithfulness. That changed how I was navigating my morning. Um, and because I, I probably could have just like spooled right on up to Mars or something. I was getting <laughs> in that like frantic uh, yeah, place I'm of stress. Yeah. And it settled my heart, praying at the beginning of the day, inviting God, trusting, reminding yourselves, telling ourselves the truth that God's mercies, his loving kindness, his compassion, his faithfulness is fresh and new every day. It is for you. Mm -hmm. God did not bypass yeah. you when he's handling out faithfulness. 
Now, here's something. If we are are defining God's faithfulness based on what's happening in our circumstance, we might come to a different conclusion. Yes. We really have to keep this grounded in the character and the nature of God, not what we think we see. Yes. Yes. Because uh, when we are defining God's faithfulness based on our circumstances, one and one does not always add up to God's faithfulness. But when we are able to see it from the eyes of faith and to just hold fast to that truth that God is working in the moment. God is working in the details. He's working behind the scenes. We don't always see everything. It enables us to hang on to that hope and that habit of hope that God is faithful. That's an example of active faith, right? Is not basing it on our circumstances. Joy is based on Jesus, right? Happiness is based on our circumstances. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is is worthy of us to, to follow and to trust over our circumstances, right? Um, so I love that active faith um, component of it um, because faith is not seeing it actually happen. It's believing that it will and that the Lord is good. And that's something you've taught me. You know, God is good this moment. <laughs> I'll be good, but God is good in every moment. We've talked about the beginning of the day, starting the day, looking for God's faithfulness. And God was showing me that Romans 12, it has this nice little list that oftentimes we think about uh, their practices of godly living, and they are. Their instructions yeah. for how to live the Christian life, things that we should be about when we are believers in Jesus. But I wanted to just uh, take a second and let's look at this passage from the lens of opportunities for us to experience and notice God's faithfulness. But I'm going to read that passage real quick. It's Romans 12, 10 through 13. And it says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, and practicing hospitality. These are all actions. They're all practices that when we're walking with the Lord, these are things that are going to um, enable us to walk faithfully with Him. Yes. As we are in the process of living out the Christian life, doing our doing, earlier in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice of you, like just offering all of ourselves, all of our moments, all of our time to the Lord. This is part of what it looks like out, you know, spiraled out into the dippy dailies, the nitty gritty daily things that we do. Have you ever heard the term clarity comes with action? I hadn't before this, but I really like that. I mean, it makes sense based on some other quotes I've heard. So, yeah. One of the ways that we can get more clarity on the faithfulness of God and his grace that is fresh every morning that never fails, that's for us, um, is to ask for that clarity in action. That's part of like starting the day, asking the Lord to make us aware of his faithfulness setting the stage to have that clarity in action, to notice God while he is at work around us. But we participate in that. It's not just like, oh, God's doing all these things out here, but God is working in the midst of our lives Mm -hmm. and we participate. We have stuff that we're doing. And this list, you know, most of the things that we do will kind could slide into one of these categories. And we're not necessarily going to unpack all of these categories because that would be a really uber long (laughs) broadcast. And I don't think any of us want that. But just taking this list and saying, okay, this, this is a lens to look at ways we can experience, ways we can look for God's faithfulness, Mm -hmm. being devoted to one another in brotherly love, So oftentimes, God is faithful to us in the midst of our interactions with other people. Amen. We're wanting other people to love us, but when we're focused on loving them, we're blessed. Yes. God is working in and through us as we seek to to give devoted brotherly love that comes from Christ. And as we're as we're actively engaged with community, with other people, whether those are the relationships in our household, our spouses, our parents, our children 
our neighbors, our friends, our coworkers, as we're actively engaged in blessing them, loving them, supporting them, we're going to be blessed in the process because we're not making it all about us. You know, God just might open your eyes to some of the faithfulness of what he's doing around you because it's not always about us. When I see God's faithfulness in someone else's life, that bolsters my faith as well. Community is super high on your <laughs> value list. So I want you to speak into this because I know you can I know you can go to town on oh, this. Oh gosh, yeah, we could do a whole broadcast just on this one point. Community, I mean we were created for community, right? I mean Jesus was our perfect example of that. He did step away to pray and do all, all the things, of course, but he spent more time in community, um, not only blessing um, others, but doing all the practical stuff. And so, yeah, that's if not for community, I, I, I just wouldn't be where I'm at, you know, today. I've seen this work itself out. And, and one thing while you were talking, it reminded me God's economy is not our economy. It sometimes it looks strange. It's uh, countercultural. But what I didn't realize is when I said yes to prison ministry, and I had no idea what the Lord was going to do. And I am a a different person today, a better person. I am stronger and I know what freedom looks like better because I went in and served in a prison where there was a group of women running their race, even though behind bars, they were running their weight race with Jesus. And every week I went in, I came out more blessed. That's just one of so many examples. And that's a different way of doing community. It wasn't like I was hanging out with them and emailing them and texting them and going yes. to lunch and what not. It was just that one day a week, but what God did in and through them and, and in and through me, because I saw, I saw mm -hmm. what, what he was doing and he was so faithful and you know, a lot of the story and I won't go into that, but just his faithfulness just to get me in to the prison and then to get me behind bars consistently. And then it came to a point, Ginger, where I wanted to be there every week, despite how difficult it was sometimes to go for various yes. reasons. So that's just one way, but yeah, community is huge and it's, it's, it can be a struggle because that's also where, lots of hurts happen and so this is why we have to cling to Jesus because mm -hmm. it can also be a, a pain point as well but we were created for it so we we have to to grow and learn how to work that out and it's worth it yes. every single time yes one of the things that as you're talking that comes to mind is so oftentimes we approach this verse from our own perspective and our own need mm -hmm. of having a problem. And in fact, the writer of Lamentations, just before this verse, he's talking about how hard his circumstances are. He says, my hope is perishing, but I recall this to mind. And that's where he reminds himself of God's faithfulness. A little bit beyond this passage, he says, therefore, I have hope of this remembering God's faithfulness. So tying that back to community and being devoted to one another in brotherly love, both yeah. you and I have experienced great loss in our life and supported people that we love dearly in a disease process that was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, my sister um, in 2021 contracted ALS and passed away 11 months later. It was mm -hmm. hard and a devastating journey of physical loss and then loss of her life. But God was incredibly faithful. She was single and lived alone in a two-story house and she was legally blind. And it would be easy for her to feel like I missed the God's faithfulness bus, that it's not fair that I have this too. And we had those conversations and, and no, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, she had six cats, loved her cats dearly. And so she wanted to stay in her house with her cats. And this was during COVID. She didn't want to be stuck in a nursing facility where no one could visit her. Right. God was so faithful. So many people came out of the word work gave her love and care and provided for needs, helped feed the cats, brought meals, took her to doctor's appointments, helped her get dressed. It was incredible. And God showed up in an extraordinary and I think miraculous way through the faithfulness of others, of him working through other people to display Yes. the wonder and the majesty of his faithfulness in her yeah. life in that just devastating season. I know that you experienced so much love and support 
from other people in your journey with Bill's illness and, and death. Does Is there one particular experience that come to mind when we're talking about God's faithfulness showing up through the love of people? So many examples, but probably the one that sticks in my mind the most was a little bit like less expected. And it was it was one of our hardest nights. He was in the hospital and he actually had almost died about two o'clock in the morning. One of the one of my friends, who is also um, a, a mom to military boys, um, had sent me a text and said, I'm on my way. What can I bring you? And it was like an hour's drive. She drove and showed up and brought practical things like a toothbrush because I was not planning on staying the night that night, but I was not about to to leave him. And so a a woman of God showing up, going out of her way, I didn't have to ask, you know, and and for hours people were texting me and calling and actually asking, do you need us to come? And it was so stressful, right? When you're looking at your loved one and they're dying and you're looking at doctors who are talking about things like, you know, he signed a, you know, a DNR or whatever that, that paper is called. And I'm like, I know, but I just believe that this is not it right now. So to have a believing friend, not ask, but show up and it doesn't count against those who didn't because they asked and I said, no, but she didn't ask. She showed up. So yeah, the faithfulness of the Lord through people who are not afraid to show up in the heart. Cause that's, it's one thing, you know, it's fun. Like with you, it was fun to help you launch your first book. You know, that is fun. It's easy to show up. But when somebody is watching a loved one die and the only thing you can do is feed a cat, it can almost seem not important or it's inconvenient to drive an hour at two o'clock in the morning. And yet people do that kind of thing. And it bolsters your your faith in the, in the Lord because you're like, Lord, there's no one, no one else could have made this happen but you. And, you know, and this brings me back to that point about we participate yes clarity comes with action we notice god's faithfulness as we're in the midst of living a living a christian life inviting him into all the moments and we've talked about experiences where others showed us love Mm -hmm. and showed us the faithfulness of god in the moment when it was needed but we also get to participate in being that god's vehicle of faithfulness loving mm-hmm. kindness mercy compassion of sharing that and giving extending that to others when they need it you know as we're asking god to build this habit of looking for his faithfulness of inviting him to move us in his working faithfulness in our life and the lives of others today you know life becomes a little bit of an adventure so much of god's faithfulness comes through how he's working in the midst of all of life which so the heart of our lives are those relationships and how we are engaging with other people when we're persevering in tribulation is when we most need the habit of looking for god's faithfulness of noticing it of believing that he's going to be faithful even when the situation's not good that doesn't change his faithfulness if we are building today the habit of being noticers like you were saying noticers of god noticers of god's work around us then we're day by day growing stronger and stronger in our trust level of god's faithfulness and when we do have to persevere in tribulation the habit's already there we don't have to try to cultivate the habit under pressure because you know what you can't build a habit under pressure yeah yeah it's so hard <laughs> i've tried i've tried right. it's really yeah. hard yeah. yeah simply believing the truth that the lord's kindness says never fail his compassions are new every morning let's back off just a little bit and talk about the end of the day yeah so what can happen at the end of the day that can help us solidify and experience God's faithfulness that um, what what are some practices we could do at the end of the day? Well, you know, my answer. (laughs) I'm setting you up, sis. So cultivating, yeah. yeah, cultivating gratitude. Now you can cultivate gratitude any time of the day for sure. And I do it throughout the day and I start my day as well as I had mentioned earlier, but there's just something about closing your day at night and right before you go to bed that just ends it on such a good note. And and gratitude is a list of God's faithfulness from the day. And it can be as simple as, you know, Lord, thank you for getting us through our broadcast that didn't 
go exactly as planned or lord thank you that my stubborn bulldog is feeling better today or i mean it can be so simple i think we can we can overcomplicate gratitude sometimes and journaling can just be bullet points and then it can be bigger as Thank you, Lord, for saving my husband's life on that particular night. Um, and thank you for giving me five more years past diagnosis, terminal diagnosis, five years. So it can be this bigger stuff and it can be this mesh, you know, like I, the other night I had a gratitude list that I was grateful for, you know, sweet friends and provision and a weeding tool that made my life easier. Like it doesn't have to be this super highly spiritual, oh my gosh, I saw God in the details, blah, blah, blah. It can be practical yeah. having being it to have it as a widow who doesn't do yard work and has this weird weed <laughs> growing across my backyard and my poor bulldog has, you know, paws that just are very super sensitive to have a practical tool, the friend who found it for me and having a practical tool that actually works is a thing to be grateful for. And then you end your day just remembering God's faithfulness throughout the day. And, and you've talked about this, but as we, this active faith, as we walk this out, we grow in it and it becomes easier and easier. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't become easy, you know, cause there are nights like the, you know, the day that Bill died, you know, I still could find things I was grateful for. I wasn't grateful that he was dead by any stretch, but I could be grateful for God's faithfulness through all the people who showed up. And so it's a, it's a great way to be able to end the day remembering God's faithfulness and writing down and making note of what we noticed. Oh, I just, I love that so, so much. And you are so good about that. You have taught me so much about cultivating that attitude of gratitude and that, you know, intentionality with gratitude, but it is so married up with noticing God's faithfulness. Um, that is such a habit that builds hope mm -hmm. in our lives. We need to cultivate that habit when times are good, when it's just the simple things, and get it into our 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 routine, our way of thinking, and we ask the Holy Spirit to help us develop this habit of being aware of God's presence, of His loving kindness, His faithfulness, His compassion, so that we are noticing it, so that it's not no longer just a verse on the page or, you know, the cute t-shirt that we go, yeah, 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 I know that, and it doesn't relate to my daily life. Mm -hmm. No, this passage is so incredibly practical. Yes. Cultivating that, looking for it, look for God's faithfulness. You be, will be amazed the more we are aware. It helps us to move from knowing that verse to having experienced it because we're noticing God's faithfulness. So the, now we know it through experience. We life it. We know it by living it. And that deepens our faith and it provides us incredible strength when times get tough. Yes. I'm going to end with um, just one simple practice, an old practice in the Catholic tradition called the daily examine. And I've found that this is helpful. It's, I'm still working on the process of remembering to kind of look back through the day and look for God's faithfulness. But that's one of the things you do as part of the daily examine is at the end of the day, you look to see where God was at work, where you felt connected to God, where you didn't feel connected to God. You pay attention. You can just kind of mentally, prayerfully with the Holy Spirit, walk through the day and ask him to help you notice where God was faithful. I just love this. A couple of questions that I wrote down that I thought were helpful. Lord, where have I met you today? Mm -hmm. um, Lord, how have I experienced your presence or your faithfulness today? Where did I miss you? Um, where have I moved with you today? Where have I participated with you in providing faithfulness and encouragement for someone else. So that is another way to add this habit into your daily practice. Yeah. So yeah. friends, I want to just thank you so much for joining us today as we have been talking about look for it. Yes. Cultivate, build the habit of every single day. Asking the Lord to help you notice his faithfulness as you hang on to the truth in Lamentations 3, 23, uh, 24. God's faithfulness is his compassion, his loving kindness, his 
faithfulness is new every morning. So uh, friends, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Ginger Harrington. This is my dear friend, Larissa Traquair, and you can join us at gingerharrington.com and give us your website. At gratefulchick.com and on Mondays and Thursdays um, when I go live. And thank you, Ginger, so much because this is such a great conversation to have um, and a great habit of hope. That's a wrap for today's conversation on Lamentations 3 and the habit of hope of looking for God's faithfulness. I hope today's conversation has reminded you that even when life feels chaotic, God's compassion and faithfulness never fail. As you go through the remainder of your week, take a moment to reflect on where you see God's mercies in your life. Practice the habit of looking for it. If you've enjoyed this episode, Please make sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone you know who could use hope right now. We're just getting started in this journey, so stay tuned for more powerful insights and helpful habits that will increase hope in your life. Thanks for being with us, friends. So until next time, hold on to hope.